God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who gave the martyr St. Thomas Becket the courage to keep, give up his life for the sake of justice, grant through his intercession that, renouncing our life for the sake of Christ in this world, we may find it in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to be, abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty God, come speak our lips, and glory be proclaimed. Holy Gospel. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed." The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> the parents of Jesus took him up to present him to the Lord, just as it is written, Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. As a lasting commemoration of the ten plagues cast upon Egypt, and the last one in particular, where the angel of death slew every firstborn male of the Egyptians while sparing the Hebrews, God decreed that every Hebrew family present to him their firstborn son as a sign of gratitude and respect. Our gospel scene relates how the Holy Family also fulfilled this duty with respect to our Lord. But in fact, 
Mary was technically under no obligation to observe this precept since she had conceived by the Holy Spirit and thus was miraculously preserved from any disturbance to her virginity or bodily integrity, even while giving birth. The early fathers of the church, speaking with the utmost modesty, compare our Lord's passage from the womb to that of light passing through glass. Another reason for their exemption was that the Christ child had a divine nature and so was not strictly bound by human laws focusing on our mortal nature. Nevertheless, to avoid potential scandal to others and to satisfy her desire to give honor to God, our Blessed Mother presented her firstborn son to the Father. This offering, which included her future sword of sorrow, was exceedingly pleasing to God, and although we cannot imitate a divine mystery, we can draw out certain aspects that we can imitate. Perhaps we cannot offer a firstborn, but we can offer to God our first fruits, in other words, the best of what we have. This makes sense if we consider that when a person visits a great dignitary, it would be an insulting breach of etiquette to greet the servants in his presence before greeting the dignitary himself. In the same way, it seems improper that in the presence of the one who keeps us in existence from moment to moment of every day, that we would not turn our attention to him to thank him in some way for gifting us with the ability to do whatever is in front of us at any time. This is the idea behind praying our morning offering prayers or saying grace before meals. Upon waking, we could offer our first few minutes of the day to God in thanksgiving for simply bringing us to another day. An extension of this is the practice of making God the first intention of our daily tasks. This means making the fulfillment of His will the principal motive of whatever activity we begin. In this way, we also find a motive for keeping our attention fixed on the task at hand and doing the best job we possibly can. These are only a few examples of how we could conform our sentiments to those of our Blessed Mother in a way that is compatible with our circumstances. Let us pray that whatever first fruits we offer to God, we do it without hesitation or anxiety, recognizing that God will never allow himself to be outdone in generosity. Like Simeon, who trusted in the light of Christ, we approach the Lord with confidence and present our petitions. For the Church, may Christ continue to illuminate her path to unity throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For political leaders of every nation, may the humble birth of Jesus inspire a renewed commitment to peace-building and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering or burdened with difficulties, may the hope found in the Lord's faithfulness and promise bring them consolation and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parishioners, may the Holy Spirit guide us in becoming an ever more forgiving and gracious people. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially for Robin Babos, for whom this Mass is offered, may the Lord shine his face upon them and grant them eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Heavenly Father, we entrust ourselves to you by living as faithful followers of your Son. We ask that you hear these prayers and grant them according to your will and through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <clears throat> Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. <coughs> Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.